We're going to talk about uh, chapter 9 and chapter 10. I know I've screwed up the schedule, but oh well. Let's go ahead and get started. Gaining further up, uh, a little understanding, chapter 9. Before asking questions, it is important to express understanding by reflecting your feelings, content, meaning, and summarizing. Questioning without expressing understanding may seem like grilling. Open-ended questions are questions that require more than one or two word answers. They invite clients to express opinions and feelings. Open-ended questions generally begin with who, what, when, or how. How do you feel about that? Tell me about. Will you tell me more about Will you tell me more about how you feel when? Will you explain more about? Tell me about who was helping you, uh, who helped you with this problem. How have other people helped you with this problem? What led you to seek help at this time? Tell me about improvements you've noticed since our last appointment. What would your life be like if this problem wasn't going on? How have others, do you know, solved this type of problem? Who have you talked to about this problem? How did it help to talk to others about the problem? Tell me about what it feels like to have this problem. How have you solved other problems in your life? What do you understand about the kind of help I might offer you? Tell me about what you have done to work on this problem. Close-ended questions are questions that can be answered with one or two words. Close-ended questions are appropriate when the counselor is seeking specific information. How old are you? What is your address? How many people? Uh, how many other people live in your house? They give you facts and are easy to answer. Skilled practitioners choose the type of question to ask based on their goals. Beginning practitioners often overuse closed-ended questions. Using closed-ended questions may imply practitioners need to be in control rather than work collaboratively with the client. Some clients treat open-ended questions as closed-ended questions by giving one-word responses. It is necessary for the counselor to encourage them to speak more. Tell me more about. When did this, this problem start? What do you like about school? Recess, of course. What do you do when your husband comes home drunk? Do you check in with each other at the beginning of their meetings? Do you eat dinner together? Asking more than one question at a time uh, is confusing. In their reply, they will only answer one question and you may potentially miss important information. Is it hard for you both to work and study? How does your family feel about this? Asking multiple choice questions uh, may inhibit the client's exploration. How do you feel about that? Sad, confused, angry? However, with a client who has a limited vocabulary or isn't used to expressing their feelings in words, the occasional multiple choice question can help. Asking rapid-fire questions, uh, this form of questioning is common in some cultures. Most people feel this style fits more with interrogation, not with creating cooperative working relationships. Attempts at showing understanding should come between questions. Questions with a suggestion embedded. Uh, sometimes questions are used to inform or persuade clients about your point of view. Don't you think it's important for you to go back to school and complete your GED? 
What do you think of trying to exercise more to de decrease your depressed mood? Questions that begin with why often invite people to feel defensive. Why questions rarely invite open uh, discussion and may be experienced as attacking. People actually often uh, aren't aware of why they act the way that they do. Problems or challenges are important to explore. The history, the length of duration, the current changes, previously employed attempts at solution, the severity and frequency of a problem. Using scaling questions can be valuable. Using a 1 to 10 scale to rate an uh, aspect of the problem, uh, what aspects of the client's life are affected by the problem, the situation and environment are also important and can sometimes give a good, a more complete perspective on the problem. A nurturing and sustaining environment can support a client through many stressors. What life stressors has the client experienced? The number of children and other people in the house, job demands, deaths, illnesses, and or major health challenges. What life stressors has the client experienced? Current or past traumatic events in family uh, or community, demands related to school, church involvement, uh, volunteer activities. If the practitioner is genuine, clients feel more comfortable exploring. Being stiff, distracted, or detached does not indicate genuineness. Genuineness is indicated by being natural, sincere, authentic, candid, honest, and forthright. forthright. And that's the end of chapter 9. <laughs> okay, let's go on to chapter 10. Developing a deeper understanding. <clears throat> in ordinary conversation, people often communicate in verbal shorthand, only discussing topics in a superficial way. We rarely ask for more information. We assume that people use words the same way that we do. It is important for practitioners to listen for gaps in information. Notice points and, and words that are not clear. Ask about how conclusions are reached. I understand you're feeling depressed. What is depression like for you? I hear you were concerned about your children's behavior. Can you give me some examples? I notice that several people in the group are looking at the floor. Will one of you share what you are feeling? When behaviors, feelings, experiences, and the nature of the problem, challenge, or, or, or situation are clear, then changes can be more easily made. The meaning of words and body language can be explored. The basis of conclusions can be enlightening. Using questions to expand and clarify is important in, in families and groups. You said your mom doesn't like you. Will you tell me what makes you think that? I don't think others care about finishing what we started. Will you tell me what is happening that makes you think that? I know my husband doesn't love me. Will you give me some examples of his behavior that leads you to feel that way? A client must be willing to explore more deeply. A client must feel comfortable and safe. They can be useful for the practitioner to ask about the client's hesitancy to share. But the practitioner should not push clients to share. Gaining further information may help in establishing a trusting relationship. Silence may be useful in encouraging clients to explore, explore further. Silence allows time for processing. Feelings may be experienced more deeply during silent periods. The more intense the feelings, the more silent time may be needed to experience them. Some people need more silent time to process their thoughts and feelings. Some people need quiet time to think. Silence should be used purposefully. Observe your client's reaction to silence. 
Some may feel rejected. Some uh, may just feel uncomfortable. Each situation and each client needs to be thoughtfully considered. To develop deeper understanding of clients besides focusing on their challenges, you need to focus on their strengths, their resources, their positive factors. Many clients may want their challenges to be understood before they move on to strengths. By focusing on the client's strengths, resources, and other positive factors, the practitioner can help clients feel hopeful, positive, and more able to cope. Highlighting what clients have already achieved shows that the practitioner understands and supports the efforts they have made. What do you do well? What do you like about yourself? What does your family do that is fun? What are some good things about this organization? Tell me about friends uh, who have helped you in the past. What have you done that you were proud of? Empowerment is achieved when clients know that they have the knowledge, skills, competencies, and re resources to make decisions, solve problems, and achieve goals. As people use their strengths and resources to face and deal with problems and challenges, they gain confidence. Tell me about something you completed that seemed difficult. What skills have helped you solve previous challenges? How have you resolved previous challenges? After reflecting the client's strengths, the practitioner can invite the client to catalog other instances when they have actively participated in solving problems. This will enhance their confidence and sense of empowerment. Tell me about something you completed that seemed difficult. Of the things you have already done to resolve this problem, tell me about what has worked well, even for a brief period of time. What are some of the things you learned from working with past challenges? What skills helped you solve past challenges? How have you resolved previous challenges? Respect can be demonstrated by expressing understanding and validating the client's story, by showing interest in the client's thoughts and feelings, wants, needs, and goals, by creating and maintaining a collaborative environment, by asking about strengths, resources, potential, and capacities, by identifying strengths. With all the trained professionals in this group, I am confident we can find a way to resolve this. You've tried to solve this problem. Will you tell me other things you have considered but haven't used yet? You seem quite angry about how your boss has been behaving. It must be a tough place to work. How do you think I might help you? When you, when you resolve this problem, what are some things you will be that will be different in your family? You have told me about the many ways that you have worked on this challenge. Who else in the agency might be willing to work with us to resolve this problem? As I understand it, you've done a lot of thinking about the problems this organization is, is facing. You've talked to a number of people about your understanding of the problem and have decided to commit time and energy to resolving this problem. You've taken some important steps in the prob in problem solving. And that is the end of chapter 10 as well. So I'll talk to you next week.